Welcome back. So on the last video, I used the camera for the first time and I also tested it on some leatherette. I gave you the settings for that leatherette, but I had a lot of questions about the camera, so I kept testing. So today, I'm going to walk you through my test because there's some pretty cool functionality which surprised me. But I'm also left with a question and I'm hoping some of you can answer. Today, on LaserNug. So I did a very simple test or use of the camera on that last video and I thought to myself, is the camera slash the Thunderbolt smart enough if I put multiple pieces of material across the workspace randomly and see if it'll actually know where each one of them are and engrave them exactly. So I took three of these leatherette bottle openers, placed them just randomly as you see on the board there, just tried to eye it up as far as whether it was perpendicular or parallel put them in three just random spots. And then the only thing I did is I auto-focused on one of them just to make sure I had focused height. And just so you know, for reference, I'm using a 2.5 inch lens on the bolt. So we're here in Lightburn. You'll see I've already got the desktop set up and I've already put the three logos in there that I wanna burn or engrave onto these bottle openers. They're already pre-sized and ready to go. First thing I wanted to make sure I did is change my fill settings, which I already have done. 800 millimeters, 20% power. And now I'm gonna go into my laser window. I'm gonna click on camera control. And because I haven't used it yet, you'll notice up here at the top, camera shows none. So in order to connect it to the KS5A, I just click on it. <laughs> you'll see here, I forgot to take the lens cover off. So give it a second here and you'll see that I popped it off. And we'll put that down. And there you can see in the window are my three randomly placed bottom openers. Now you see, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna click update overlay. And there we go. There they are now in my workspace, exactly as they are on the honeycomb in my bolt. If you look over here to the bottom right, you'll notice it's automatically defaulted to absolute coordinates. And I wanna come back to this later. You'll see that it's defaulted set at the center, which is often where I've le left it. And you folks know that the X position and Y position in the top left are your actual real-time coordinates on your workspace. I grab my first logo and I drop it into the first bottle opener. I'm gonna grab the next logo and I'm gonna position it on the third bottle opener. Pretty simple stuff, nothing fancy. Because I turned the middle bottle opener 180 degrees, I'm gonna to have to flip my logo similarly so I'm just gonna turn it. I just use the period key to do that. And now I'm gonna place it on the last bottle opener. I've touched nothing else other than check my fill settings. I positioned it all. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press shift and I'm gonna click on each one of my designs. So you can see it's more or less like it's grouped it on the screen as one design or one file to send. I'm in good shape. Again, remember we're absolute coordinates and that appears to be what I've learned the camera works on. I'm gonna press send, send it to the bolt. I have grouped them. So just in case, I figured I'd frame it before I you know, wasted the material. So you'll see I clicked frame and sure enough, it appears to have captured all three of them. You'll notice that the laser was just sitting randomly in the top left corner of the laser because again, we're on absolute coordinates, not user origin. Now we'll click start and let's see if the laser engraves it exactly where it's supposed to on each of those three different articles. So hands down, I am elated and quite impressed at how smart this system is together. That I can place multiple objects indiscriminately around the workspace, put different engravings on each one of them, and have it capture it with such precision on each different item. So big check mark there for me. 
Plus, it's now expanded my knowledge of it, but I also need to clean them now. So I thought I'd test that for you as well. As you good folks know, I've kind of learned now that before I wipe anything, especially any type of porous material, I'm gonna hit it with the air pressure. Try to get all that loose dust off before I start cleaning. And I wanted to show you the difference between three kind of common cleaners that I see on YouTube. So I've got three items here. I've hit them with the air, and I'm gonna try cleaning one with the Dawn Power Wash, the second one with what's called Whip It. You get it up here in Canada. It's actually made in the US, and I'm 99% sure it's pretty much the same as your LA Awesome. It's a stain and grease remover. It's totally biodegradable, good for the planet, no harmful stuff in it. And then we're just going to use regular tap water. And you folks also noticed I like to use a toothbrush on porous materials just in case, or if I'm engraving pictures or anything that with depth. So whenever I'm cleaning something, that's kind of my final test, is I'll run my finger over it. Make sure I don't get any black marks or any type of residue, whether it's wood, tumblers, uh, leatherette, whatever it is that I'm engraving because you don't want a customer getting an item, using it and finding they've got black dust or, or black marks on their fingers. There's the one we cleaned with the water. I'm hoping you're gonna be able to see that okay. It's pretty clean. There's nothing in the pores of that leatherette. It's come up really nice, just water. This one was cleaned with the Whippet. Again, nothing. The power wash did clean, but to the feel, everything is very slippery. And you may have noticed that when I used the power wash, there was a lot more black coming off on the towel than on the other two cleaners. But it's almost like the power wash has dulled the engrave. In other words, on these other two, the engrave appears much uh, more rich, whereas the one that I did with the power wash kind of almost has a dull finish to it, almost like it's, it's not bled, but it, it doesn't look as clean and sharp or as full or rich as the other two do. Just my observations, and I hope that's helpful to you if you're new to lasers and like myself, new to the bolt. So two things to leave you with. One, really pleased with the outcome of this test. Did not realize it was that versatile, and that's gonna be really, really helpful. And I hope it's helpful to you too if you're like me and you're new to lasers and you haven't used your camera yet. But here's the question I'll leave you with for those of you that have a little more experience or know perhaps or can explain the results of several other tests I did. So here's the perhaps issue that I found and I don't have an answer to. After you've updated the overlay, so you've now got a picture of your workspace out of your bolt on Lightburn, you can do whatever you normally do with your engraver, your design, put it where you want. If you click send to the bolt, you know, do your autofocus, away you go. It knows exactly where to engrave and it does it consistently every time. However, if you've updated the overlay and at any time between then and the time you send your design to the bolt, if you go down to the bottom right where it says absolute coordinates and you change that to user origin and play with any of those origin positions out of that nine point grid and or you leave it as absolute coordinates, but you go up to the top toolbar and you play with the absolute coordinates grid those nine dots at the top of the screen, it will impact the laser head's positioning or its origin when it starts to do the engrave. In short, it throws it off and the laser head will just start engraving somewhere randomly that is not tied to the absolute coordinates it got when you updated the overlay. 
my question is if you have the experience or you can help us out here in the comments i'd greatly appreciate it is that normal is it perhaps a bug maybe in light burn maybe in the bolt or is there a way to come back from that if you have accidentally touched the origin i'm assuming the best way to do it is just to update the overlay and start again but i'd really welcome your thoughts and advice in the comments other than that i hope this has been helpful if you're new to lasers like i am especially if you just got your bolt as i've noticed from several of you in the last week you just got them delivered thanks so much for sticking around have a great week please be kind to one another and i'll see you again right here i'm gord potter and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.